Good evening. My name is Terry Kent, and I'm from Waynesboro, Virginia. Last time I set foot on the college campus of Lee, it was, as a student, was in May of 1975. And here I am today talking to you 42 years later, finishing what I began in the fall of 1974. When I attended Lee, Dean Kahn today was my psychology teacher then, and his father, Dr. Charles Kahn, was the dean of what was called Lee College, not Lee University. My classmates included Dr. Terry Cross, who is now the dean of the School of Theology, I believe, and Marcus Lamb of Daystar Ministries on Television. I served as an evangelist in the Church of God nationally for 10 years. And God so blessed me, favored me, that I got to uh, work with all different cultures in 24 different states. Um, it was exciting. I also was blessed to have the first revival ever in the largest jail in America, in Cook County Jail, Chicago, with Chaplain James Durrell, who used to pastor here locally. In 1985, while serving in full-time ministry, I also got to travel for a year and a half with a Southern Gospel Quartet um, called the Cressman Quartet, and we were nominated for a Grammy Award. It was totally political, but it sure sounds good, um, for the song Go Jonah. It had the same tune as the Oak Ridge Boys' Elvira. In the secular world, I have owned a few businesses, including a tax business that had ended up with two offices and a thousand clients, and I've owned different video stores. In working for other companies, I have worked in management in restaurants, video stores, video chains, and hotel chains, chains such as Comfort Inn. Who am I? I'm 61 years of age probably very immature and young at heart. I'm married to a fantastic wife, the greatest lady in the world, who has the greatest patience, putting up with me, named Twyla. We have two children and three unbelievable, beautiful grandchildren. In the past, I have served as evangelist and associate pastor in the Church of God. And now for this season that I'm living in, um, I find myself being an associate pastor pastor of a Rama church on a staff of 12, six full-time and six part-time staff members. If you're ever traveling up I-81 north in Virginia, exit 220, we're right there on the side of the interstate. It's all location, location, location. <laughs> we have a sports program that this year alone will have at least 600 different children involved. From ages 6 all the way to 18, we have travel teams. 80% of the young people do not even attend our church. But hopefully we have a good influence on their lives. Every Halloween, our church has a Halloween alternative in a local community center. Last year, we attracted over 5,000 people that lined up over two hours before the doors opened. And we saw also 50 decisions for the Lord. The average church runs around 84 today. We average 200 from age nursery to 18 alone. Uh, we're just so blessed. And we have an average attendance of around 600. And between eight and 900 people call us their church home, but some people have to work on Sundays as such. Um, what does it mean to be a Christian leader? I believe, first of all, a Christian leader should be one that does not rule by fear, guilt, or intimidation. And in return, as a leader, a Christian leader, I should not be uh, my idea formed of leadership through other people's guilt or intimidation. I'm reminded of 1 John 4, 7, and 8 as a Christian. In fact, I learned a little course at uh, Lee College way back in 1974. It's saying something like this. 
Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. So, beloved, let us love one another, First John 4, 7, and 8. So, everybody go out and learn that this week. Uh, at Raymond Bible Training Center, we were always told people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I believe that's so much so true. People need to know how much we care from the heart and not just words. What's the difference between a Christian leader and a regular leader? I believe that in the secular world today, most leaders lead by guilt and intimidation. And we as Christians should not. In fact, some of my favorite scriptures um, include the love scripture. I believe we ought to lead with God's love. Um, our local church uses the Exodus 18 template of Moses and our 62 departments and sports program to um, use leadership to reach out and influence people and make more contacts um, for the kingdom of God. Um, I'm reminded of the scripture in John 5 where the man at the pool said, Sir, I have no man. And even as we watch this tonight, there are so many people in all of our lives, family and non-family, that's thinking no one cares. Nobody cares about me tonight as I go to bed. We as a church need to care. I'm looking forward one day in Matthew 25, hearing well done, good and faithful servants. And lastly, what am I hoping to learn from this class? Honestly, any and all information I can learn to be, become a better leader and a better soul winner for Christ. I am praying for each of you. And um, also, just want to tell Barry Dillo in our class, I have ministered at your home church, Bastion Church of God, and uh, was pleased to hear that. God bless you. I'll be praying for each of you.